The Great Sports Series has two strikes against it, but does Sega at least get a baseball game right? This is Sega Masters. <laughs> Yes, it's another great sports title from Sega, and thus another attempt to compete with the sports offerings on Nintendo's console. We previously saw Sega's takes on tennis and ice hockey, and now it's baseball stepping up to the plate. It goes without saying that baseball is a must for any video game system, with it being the national pastime and all that. Look at the catalog of even the most obscure video game consoles, and you're guaranteed to find a baseball title or two. Heck, even the Virtual Boy has a baseball cartridge. Leading the first wave of 8-bit baseball titles in the mid-1980s was, of course, Nintendo's Baseball. One of the first titles released for the Japanese Famicom in 1983 and the American NES in 1985. The cartridge offered a very simple yet still playable simulation of the sport, and for several years was the only game in town. Naturally, Sega wanted to show the competition up with their own take on baseball for their console, but in a confusing twist, today's feature cart wasn't their first attempt to compete against Nintendo's cart, nor was it even the first to bear the title Great Baseball. Back in 1985, when Sega released the original Mark III console in Japan, one of its earliest offerings was a game they called Great Baseball, only it's not the game we're spotlighting. Released on the Sega cart format, this first version went up against NES Baseball by... being an almost direct clone of it. The graphics were certainly superior, but other than that, it could just about be described as a bootleg of its Nintendo counterpart, much like Super Tennis. Two years later, as Sega built the Master System's catalog in North America, they deemed this game unsuitable for exporting, possibly because it already felt dated by then, or maybe to avoid any lawsuits from their competitor. In any case, Sega crafted the second version for the US and European markets, and while they reused the Great Baseball moniker, it is completely different from the Japanese version, and even sported some additional features that haven't been seen in a baseball game up to that point. So now we'll dive into this Western exclusive release, which gives a good first impression after the cool title screen. Instead of just a handful of teams identified by a simple letter, Sega outdoes its competition by offering 26 squads based in real Major League cities, even sporting their real-life team colors. The teams are also divided into two leagues, the A-League, which allows designated hitters for pictures, or the N-League that forces their hurlers to swing a bat, just like the American and National Leagues themselves. But don't look for the actual team names or logos to be used, since Sega doesn't obtain an MLB license for this cart. Incidentally, no interleague play is allowed either. It's either one league or the other. Once you and your opponent choose your squads, you get to select your starting pitcher and his specialty pitch, as well as his stamina, which determines how long he can go until he needs to be replaced on the mound. Then it's out to the field for a standard 9 inning contest, and I'll assume you're mostly familiar with how baseball works. You begin with the batter stepping up to the plate for his face-off with the pitcher, but instead of the traditional behind-the-batter viewpoint used by most other baseball carts, Great Baseball uses this behind-the-pitcher view just like a real television broadcast. It's done pretty well too with the detailed players sporting some good colors and smooth animation. In addition, the umpire audibly calls balls, strikes, and outs with some mostly decent voice clips. Lineup cards are also displayed in between hitters, showing the batters with actual yet fictional names and stats. Certainly more advanced than anything NESers had at the time. In fact, Nintendo gamers wouldn't experience much of this for themselves until the US release of Jellico's Bases Loaded a year later. Anyway, once the ball is put into play, the game switches to a wide view of the whole field as the batter rounds the bases while the defense tries to respond. Assuming your outfielders can get the ball and throw it to the baseman, the action shifts to this closer view for infield plays as well as close calls at the bases. Pretty much the same views NES baseball uses, just with better visuals. 
Eventually, you switch back to the TV view as the next batter steps up to the plate, and so the game goes until the 27th out as recorded to conclude the contest. Now those who remember how Sega botched their earlier great sports titles may be concerned about the actual gameplay in this cartridge. But unlike those other entries, Great Baseball actually plays decently for the most part. The game moves at a nice pace and the controls are pretty responsive, enabling you to pull off some quick moves on defense such as double plays and pickoffs. Calling for a steal with a man on base is also easy, provided you can pull it off. While you don't directly control the outfielders until you run down the ball, overall your teammates have decent AI, especially the infielders as they tag the runner out. The CPU provides some formidable competition in the one player mode, yet never really gets unfair, even if they always seem to be in the right spot to snag pop flies. Unfortunately, even with its solid gameplay and innovations, Great Baseball doesn't quite hit a home run. The behind the pitcher view is certainly different than other games, but the camera placement can also make batting more challenging than it should be since you often can't tell which way the ball is headed until it's too late. And it is hard to ignore how the game devolves into another NES baseball clone once it switches to the fielding phase, even bringing some of the same issues with it. Your outfielders must be wearing heavy shoes as they can take forever to get to the ball, often allowing the opposing runners to take several bases and even score runs virtually unopposed, which also gets on your nerves. While the game looks pretty good, the audio doesn't really do much with setting the atmosphere. The crowd is silent for much of the contest, making it sound like you're playing in an empty stadium. They do occasionally erupt into a jet engine sound that I assume is them getting excited about something. There's no background music to punch up the action either except for the brief ditties for home runs and the side change. And since this is a mid-1980 sports cartridge, once the game concludes with the last out, that's it. All you get is a one and done experience with no pennant modes or a championship series to keep you playing. If the score is deadlocked after the standard 9 innings, two human players are allowed to go into extra frames, but ties always go to the CPU in the one player mode, which means the computer opponent doesn't have to actually win to pick up the victory, yet you have to win outright. The only other feature on this card is a home run derby, which allows you to show off your hitting skills by clubbing as many dingers as you can. And it's an okay diversion, but won't keep you interested very long. So when all is said and done, Great Baseball ends up being a rather decent 8-bit baseball title overall. It certainly introduced a number of features that became standard in future baseball offerings, and the mostly competent gameplay makes it seem like the Great Sports series is at least headed in the right direction. Yet at the same time, all the shortcomings in the presentation as well as the gameplay annoyances knock it down from being a truly great cart. And as I mentioned, the few innovations are really the only thing keeping it from being just another copy of its NES counterpart. As a result, it's hard to recommend this title over the superior 8-bit baseball offerings that followed it, including the Master System's own Reggie Jackson Baseball, which came out two years later. Great Baseball isn't a bleacher bum, and may provide a nice fix for your video baseball aficionados, but it won't be playing in the major leagues anytime soon. Oh.